This video is going to show how to assemble a robot in Onshape and then check it in your cell layout. So the first thing that you want to do is go to cad.onshape.com and sign in after you've made your student account. So once you sign in, then it will take you to your documents page and you will see all the documents that are in there. To make a new document, you click create document and name it whatever you want. Here I'm going to call it robot, but you would want to put whatever robot you're loading in according to the whatever the manufacturer named it. So then you go to this plus sign and you click import. So once you're here, navigate to wherever you have downloaded the robot CAD files and upload those. Usually a step or a parasolid works the best. So since I've already done that, I'm going to cancel out of this and show you where I have loaded that in. So here I chose an ABB IRB 6700-15320 as my robot. Now you can see when I uploaded all the documents. The parts just showed up automatically in the assembly in the correct order. That's good um, because that is where we want them to be, but if the, I tried to move the robot, it would fall apart. So I have to properly mate each link to each other link so that they will move in the right pattern. Um, so the way that you want to do that is looking at this, you can see first that the robot position matches how it is in the triad. Okay, you want the z-axis to be up, you want the x-axis to be along kind of the robot's snout, and then you want the y-axis to be to the side. This position that the robot is in now is its home position. When all joint angles are zero, this is what the robot should look like. Um, but this, we, we need it to be able to properly move and not fall apart if we try to drag on one of the pieces. So the way we do that is we'll go to each link, add a mate connector, and then finally come back to the assembly and mate all the connectors together. So if we go and click on the folder that I have the links in, then we can see here is link zero. This is the base. You can see I have a mate connector right there, but to show you how to add that, I'll hide it. So if we want to add a mate connector, then we go to mate connector button here make connector then we click where do we want it to be so if I highlight the circle you can see the main connector automatically goes in the middle and this is where the base connects to link one on the robot so this is where we want the make connector to be so we click it and then I'm going to call this one MC underscore zero one so make connector zero connecting to one that's the check mark Okay, now I'm going to delete that one since I already had it. Now we can see where it is. So then you go on to link one, and you can see that I have added make connectors for here, where link one connects to link zero on the bottom, and I called that MC10. And then also I have this one, MC12, where link one will connect to link two to allow the first vertical arm to rotate. Now I also have this one, which is actually for where the cylinder connects and you won't need to do that for your homework. The main thing is that each of the robot's main joints are in the correct spot. So go through each link and add a make connector on all of them and then finally, on the last link, link six, and you notice 
here's the origin, here is link six, is because each link showed up as in its correct location relative to the origin, same place that it was in, in the assembly. This is good, but it doesn't always happen to be the case. So if your part shows up at the origin, that's okay. So anyway, here at link six, you can see I have make connector six five, which is the back one where the very end of the robot will connect the wrist where the wrist connects to link five. But then I also have one called MCEE -E, where the mate connector, this is just the end. This is going to be the very tip of the robot where you would mount an end of arm tool or, or where you would be able to mate the end of the robot to certain locations in your cell to see if the robot can reach that spot. So once you have put mate connectors on the ends of all of your links, then go back to the robot assembly, and you will see all of the mate connectors showed up. And they're all little coordinate frames with the blue arrow in the Z direction, the red and the X in the green and the Y. So now, assuming we want to mate, mate connectors, we want to mate all of the links together. So what happens if you don't have them mated together, I'll show you by suppressing my mates. You can see that if I try to move the robot, it flies apart. This is bad. So what we need to do is we'll take each of those pieces and we'll make each one to the one before it. So for example, I want to mate joint one to joint zero. We'll build the robot like that. So we click revolute mate, and then it wants to know which mate connectors. Well, we can see the mate connector here, mate connector zero one of link one, and then here, mate connector one zero So we see that, then we can click solve and that part comes together. Now we'll want to name this one. So let's call it J1 because it's joint one. And then we need to put limits on it. Well, how do we know what the joint limits are? We can check the robot's data sheet. So if we click on the data sheet, it comes in like this. So we need to find our robot on the data sheet and see what the limits of its joints are. Let's make sure they have ours. So we're 6700, 15320. So here they are. That is 3.2 meter reach, 145 handling capacity. And it's ABB conveniently names their robots where the first number is how much weight the robot can lift, and the second number is how far it can reach in meters and in kilograms. So anyway, we'll go down here and then. Okay, it's not in this list, so we'll keep going. Here we are, okay. 6700, 150, 320. This is ours, so it says, okay, working range for axis one, that's joint one, is going to be plus and minus 170 degrees. So back to the robot. And here, we'll put in the joint limits, minus 170 and plus 170. We can press this little play button to animate it and see, okay, it looks like it can swing almost all the way front and back, but not quite. Check this. Okay, so that's how to do joint one. Then you'll do the same thing for all of the other joints and get your robot back into the right spot. So now I'm going to unsuppress all of my mates from before. So you will see the robot in its correct configuration. Here it is. Now this stuff was floating off to the side.
we'll just ignore that. Okay, so once the robot is in this position, sometimes after you've mated it, it shows up where all the joints are connected, but it's not in exactly this correct configuration. So what you want to do, let's say the robot was pointed in some kind of different position. So what we'll wanna do is click on each joint and set it to zero degrees. So we click joint one, rotate around a little bit, we can see, okay, joint one says zero degrees, so that's good. Go to joint two, joint two is at 31. So we'll double click, set to zero, and we'll do the same thing for each of the other joints. Until the robot goes back to where it was supposed to be. So now here it is, back where it's supposed to be, and we want to save this position. So we'll go over here to named positions, type the name of the position, we'll call it home, click the plus sign to add it. So doing that now means that if we put the robot in some other place, if you want to make all of those coordinate frames make connectors go away, then just press the K and they disappear. So now you can save this as a version. So we'll just click create version, name it whatever version you want. Usually it starts out as V1 and then you'll click create. 